Greetings, hello, welcome everyone to a review of Penn's Labyrinth, The Labyrinth of the Fawn by Guillermo del Toro, and actually mostly written by, at least this version, Cornelia Funke. Or uh, which Funk. I'm actually uh, not sure I how think, to pronounce it. I actually always thought it was Funk, so hence why when I read it, I, Scandal, uh, with lies and scandal over here, actually <laughs> read the book. So uh, hello. I thought it was funk. <laughs> I'm Lies. Yep. So hi, Lies. Nice and, to meet you. And, it's uh, lovely to meet you. I've and, never uh, met you before. This so. is Scandal, and yep. uh, we're going to do a very short review of the um, sort of the the beginning of the book. Quite. So if you haven't heard the preview, which is on our channel, as Scandal said, read by them. Yep. Um, you can or you can sort of go and check it out, which would be super cool and we'd appreciate it. But if not, uh, that's fine too. But if you have read the book, this would be sort of our speculation reaction to just the beginning of it, the first few chapters. And spoilers for us. We have both seen the movie. I actually own the movie. So, so we this... know we, we came in with expectations of some nature Quite. based on our reaction to the movie. So for me, um, I, I found it to be a bit too samey, honestly. Like I've not read a huge amount of movie translated into um, novel, though I've had read some movie novelizations. Right. But a lot of them, they add more. Right. Than, than what you could see on screen. The sort of those extrapolated headcanons or those things you expect must have happened to get from point A to point B, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, off screen where you couldn't see it as well because of movie framing and pacing. Right, or they put in, like, basically deleted scenes. Things you yeah, actually never got to see that never got off, like, the writer's board or whatever. But were actually it intended canon, if yes. you will. And this one, in the beginning, didn't really seem to do any of that except in one area. And Scandal <laughs> has some opinions on that. Well, okay, so within the story of Pan's Labyrinth, the way that some people like to talk about it when it was initially released was the fact that it was touted as an adult fairy tale, mm -hmm. right? It was a fairy tale for adults. Yes. Where, it was, for me, the way that I interpreted it was basically that you sort of had this lingering hope that basically the whole story was real, the fantasy story underneath was real, but you still sort of had this sinking almost sense of, like, tragedy that it kind of wasn't. That it might not be. Um, and... But I was actually having an interesting discussion with Lies about it and going, hang on, is that literally, though, me being disappointed? Because in the story, they're outright going, basically, that, yes, more or less, you're right. There is completely another world. There is so, completely other creatures. There is a whole other realm of fantastic going on. In the book. Yeah, because it's all the story. But yeah. in the book itself, it makes it explicitly clear that the labyrinth exists, that the fairy exists, that there is magic, and that she has a, a greater purpose, at least at the beginning. And then Unless she is the reincarnation to... of the daughter of the king of the the underworld of some kind. I can't remember. I don't remember exactly. But that's what she is. Okay. She is she is that princess. That is very explicitly in the beginning, because that she, she came here to find him, says the little fairy that you right. get in the little personal The fairy view. says what she is, and why she's there, and what's going to happen, and sort of, sort of what's intended to happen, and that her master is, is intent, is you know, directing her to get the girl to do what's necessary. Yep, so she can and go home. In uh, the in the movie, there was really much this sort of allegorical feeling, and again, as Scandal mentioned, this idea that either it did or it didn't happen, and you don't know whether it was some sort of fantastical psychosis of the girl trying to, you know, come deal to terms with, with or come to grips with. Incredibly complex circumstances um, that were very painful and confusing, including a war and the death of her father and her mother's remarriage. That is one thing the they did add in the book, though. her father is terrible. Her new no, stepdad no, is her terrible. her stepdad. I would say that one, they did add a little tiny bit about her dad yeah. in the book that I don't remember from the movie at no. all. So there was a little bit of expansion in that way. But unfortunately, all it did was make me want to know about his character. Like, I was not engaged enough in the book to go, ah, here, let me want to hear more of this in the novelization of it. There was so little other new things that all I wanted to do was go, yeah, but tell me more about her past and her family and when her mom was actually happy. Right. And when her dad actually, where there was someone who really loved her mom for herself, what that was like. I wanted to see I mean, Ophelia interacting with her dad. I wanted to see, what was the mom's name? Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, oh, dear. Uh, I don't remember at the moment. It starts with an... Carmen? Carmen, Carmen. Carmen. I wanted to see Carmen with somebody, you know, that, that um, loved her and that she loved rather than that she was sort of marrying for fulfillment or protection safety. or whatever yeah, it is. For safety. safety. And Which they make that also extremely explicit clear. in the book. Wow. In an odd kind of way. I mean, honestly, in some ways, I liked that it was there because it's really... It's not super explicit in the movie, I felt like. You could make the argument, like, you you as the, as the audience, assuming you even had the awareness, so that idea of this being an adult fairy tale, you're it, coming with the, ex, uh, the expectation that who's reading this, or basically, or who watched the movie, really, already understood that 
What this woman was doing was she was marrying because they couldn't survive without a man at the head of the family kind of thing. And that, and that, that she, was financial and social security. Uh-huh. And in the book, the fact that they outright state it, to me, was almost kind of a relief. Okay. Because I've seen sometimes with some stories or adaptations, they will either go, oh, she really didn't, she really loved him, uh -huh. or whatever else was going on. And Ophelia notes, so one of the things she talks about of going, that her mother was literally basically lost in her own kind of fairy tale. Yes. And they like, actually talk about that with um, Carmen, that she believes, you know, with basically the, the most dangerous myth of all, um, that a, what, a knight will save you, or that yes. a, essentially a man will save you. Uh -huh. And that Which really was so a thing. But that was so tragic. That was appropriate for the time. Yes. But again, it made me want to get away from this space and go back to because we I already kind to... of know this space because... well also not even that more like just to get to know these characters and care about them more right? i didn't really care about ophelia yet or about carmen at all except for the attachment that i'd had to them when watching the original pan's labyrinth but also they didn't for me draw me into care about carmen in any way like ophelia's attached to her and clearly loves her mother but we get so little of this character, even though she's supposed to be basically the driving force of many of Ophelia's actions, actions yeah. that it's hard for me. And so I really wanted, in the beginning of it, to learn more about what she had lost and who she had been before she became this thing so that I could invest in her before we started losing her to, you know, the sickness of baby. Right. Which is also, I think, a thing that sometimes I get frustrated by in regards to uh, both, uh, like, inter entertainment in any way. Of going, we're already assuming that, of course, you'll be attached to a woman who is pregnant and she's dying because she's pregnant. Like, mm -hmm. that feels... So I, I, I don't want to diss on Guillermo del Toro too much. I like him as a creative designer, and I like his worlds. But I feel like that's a really... That's a really typical, basically, dunk. It's really easy shorthand. And it's very simple for people to go, Yeah! And the threat of childbirth. And I'm like... Okay, so what but, I liked about it, though, in, in that, that yeah. the threat of childbirth and, the, you know, the horror of pregnancy comes up a lot. And, and so it's, it's a commonly used theme. I liked that it wasn't in reference to the man. Like, certainly he True. was concerned about the baby, but the, t the, the format of the story never put it in reference to him. It was all in reference to Ophelia's experience. Which was nice and a good grounding point. I'm just that. saying, but that initial kind of start, uh -huh. that seed, if you will, is, it feels a little, uh, it just feels a little rote? bit too rote. Okay. Um, but again, like... I want this to be good, so I was kind of curious. I went and I did read a little bit more of it. I didn't go through a ton of it. Um, but for me, yeah, it was really the fact, though, that... And I, I really do wonder, going, would I have liked this more? And even, like, if, if, if basically I didn't have the experience of the movie, but also potentially even the idea that basically in order to have a good or a better story is to almost have basically that more element of tragedy that really of that idea that's brought forth in the movie that this might just be all in Ophelia's head her really trying to cope and then at the end you're kind of like well it could be but you know it's not you know or, or you know, that it still possibly could not be and enjoying is what I'm enjoying or what I did enjoy or what I've been socialized to enjoy is that potential for hope but sort of that still soft thing of going in the end though you don't really know, and it could have just been all for naught. So one of the interesting things, um, even though it wasn't, because the revolution succeeded and the bad guy was defeated. <laughs> oh, yeah. So she still did some very important, powerful things and was there managing to survive. So I'm not talking about Ophelia's saying, journey, though, Ophelia with Ophelia itself labyrinth. doesn't become a hopeless, lost case, even if it was all in her imagination. Yeah. Because it helped her get through something really, really horrible mm -hmm. until the end of her life, which was also a tragedy in and of itself, but there you are. So, spoilers. We're, we're like, oh, we should totally have said at the very beginning. We'll probably throw it down in the comments down yeah, like, well, below. Yeah, we'll Could be in there. The being like, say, no spoilers for the movie. Because um, I don't know what we're going to do with this. the book um, is very much... Uh, from the beginning of the feel of it, it feels very, very similar to the movie in the way that it doesn't add much. However, what I would say that I did get from this book that I could say would be really lovely mm -hmm. is that it seemed to bring things down to a level that would fit well with a teen or a mature, you know, younger reader. Someone who's more experienced to a high fantasy with a little bit of tragedy in it in the way mm -hmm. that the movie might have been too traumatic. I had trouble as an adult with a couple oh, of the scenes of torture and, you know, sort of dark horror in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, but... 
I didn't have, like, the book felt like it toned that down. Like, Cornelia did a really good job of going, this is intended for a younger audience. Now, we didn't get to those horrifying scenes, but just setting it up and the feel of it, like, there were supposed to be things that were creepy, but they didn't tell you how to feel about them. And usually an author is very honest about that in the early sense of setting up a juvenile book, of going, right. here's what you can expect as far as an emotional tone. Right. And I felt she did a good job yeah. with that. And it reminded me a little bit of some of Neil Gaiman's writings or even um, Clive Barker's writings for a juvenile audience. Right. where in the beginning it sets up a really clear tone of what you can expect so you know what kind of space you're entering and what kind of things you may encounter as far as your emotional safety. It was honestly also really nice. So in, in the way that a book can be extremely expository and not get any flack for it, right, um, compared to a movie, um, it was nice to have, honestly, a lot of the imagery set up of very explicitly going, the, the soldiers are wolves, Captain Vidal is the worst one of them all. Like, it was very explicit and very... In that sense of going, I'm really going to be honest with you and going to set up going, you need to have this expectation. This is not a good person. In the yeah. movie, you don't know. You that. really still have this, I like, and maybe it's just, again, my social exposure, mm -hmm. still though this potential hopeful tone that maybe he won't be that bad. Maybe he maybe. can be redeemed in some fashion right. or helped. Right. Or that he's not just, you know, inherently like, you know, a clockwork a machine, <laughs> you know, an unfeeling thing who's basically been lost to more or less toxic masculinity. Yep. Like extremely so. But anyway, so that was kind of our vague thoughts. Vague, I will say. Please yeah. feel free to share yours down in the comments below. We would love to hear them. Um, if you really want to hear any more, though, we do do more book previews. We're definitely going to be doing more reads um we're going to be doing more reactions mm -hmm. uh please like and subscribe and comment if you want to see specific ones god we will always be here we're having a blast doing these actually this has been really really good for me i worked in audiobooks before and i have been helping my friend scandal here figuring out sort of the way of things and it's been really fun to do together and so um we, we would love to see you you know sort of having feedback or commentary either on the previews <clears> themselves <throat> or on here, the actual reviews, as well as if you read the book and you disagree or agree with anything we say, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, quite. Anyway, take care of yourselves out there. Yeah, I enjoy. Have, I have been Lance. And I have been Scandal. Bye. Bye.